the fight for the soul of a nation is just getting started. Midway through the 19th century, America is entering the modern world. In 20 years, there'll be Levi's jeans, chewing gum, and hot dogs. But the nation is split, being torn apart at the seams, dividing North and South. Slavery became not simply a political issue, not simply an economic issue, but a moral issue as well. It became the issue that defined North and South in the 1850s. September 1850. The fugitive slave law brings the brutality of Southern slavery to the North. Now, no African American is safe anywhere. Gentlemen, you've made a mistake. This is a place of business. I'm a tailor to my clients. I'm a free man. I'm not a slave, gentlemen. The fugitive slave law meant that if you were a slave and you managed to escape to the North, your master could come and get you, and you had no recourse. Oh, no. Not only that, if you were a free Negro, they still could sell you down the river. The search for runaway slaves become a witch hunt. Any African American can be condemned simply with an accusation. Even a free man has no right to a trial by jury. Federal magistrates get $10 to rule them slaves, five to set them free. Ordinary people are outraged by the new law. Abolitionist newspapers and literature spread like wildfire. Published in 1852, Uncle Tom's Cabin becomes the best-selling book of the century after the Bible. A passionate anti-slavery novel written by Harriet Beecher Stowe, an unknown housewife from Connecticut. It mainly appeals to women who are becoming politicized for the first time. Slavery is the burning issue of the day. As America expands across the continent, North and South face off over each new territory. Will it be slave-owning or free? The Northerners began to see that, wait a minute, they're not gonna keep slavery just in the South. They wanna take slavery West and to turn the country into a slave country. Americans from all over the country are flooding into the new territories on the frontier. Each becomes a battleground. Will it be slave-owning or free? It comes to a head in Kansas. A peaceful protest turns violent. Emotions run high. Towns are terrorized. Stores robbed. Homesteads burned. North and South are polarized. Neither side will back down. One man will stop at nothing to abolish slavery. John Brown, a folk hero in the North, a terrorist to the South. He thinks he's fighting a holy war. He believes himself to be God's chosen instrument. He will murder for his cause. John Brown is one of those controversial figures about whom almost anything you can say is true. He's a terrorist in our modern terms. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a revolutionary. The divide between North and South is an open wound. Kansas bleeds for two years. More than 200 dead. America is on the road to war. Slavery is tearing the nation apart. America is built on a number of distinct fault lines. One, of course, was um, slavery and freedom. That was a fault line that had to be addressed. In the South, slavery is a way of life, even for non-slave owners. Anti-slavery forces in the North threaten their right to decide their fate. There is still, in some areas of America, a great pride in being Southern and holding true to the original Southern attitude. 
I think our clinging to the idea that slavery is a right and just way of life, you know, it is a dark spot in our history. Anger in the South grows more passionate every day. The North claims the moral high ground. But they are getting rich off cotton, too. Pretty much everybody agreed that a crisis was developing. Not everyone knew that the crisis would include, in the end, a civil war, but everyone understood that a showdown between the slave South and the free North was about to occur. John Brown wants to light the fuse. October 1859. Passionate in his hatred of slavery, Brown prepares to take the fight into the heart of the South. His plan, to capture the federal arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Virginia. The biggest collection of weapons in the South. 20,000 rifles, muskets, and pistols, worth almost $7 million today. He wants to arm Southern slaves and lead a slave rebellion. He's fighting alongside his five sons, all of them willing to die for their cause. The arsenal is poorly defended. Breaking in is a pushover. But his raid is based on local slaves rising up and joining the fight. He needs a small army to carry off so many weapons. Without slave reinforcements, it's a suicide mission. Word gets out and local townsfolk attack the arsenal. Not a single slave joins Brown and his men. They are trapped and fighting for their lives. I want to free all Negroes in the state. I have possession of the United States Armory. And if the citizens interfere with me, I must only burn the town and have blood. At dawn, the U.S. Marines arrive. They storm the arsenal under the command of Colonel Robert E. Lee. Brown won't go down without a fight. But the soldiers overwhelm them. The fight against slavery has only just begun. But John Brown's crusade is over. His sons are dead. His trial captivates the country. Charged as a criminal, he puts the institution of slavery on trial. America is fatally divided. Brown is convicted of treason and sentenced to death. A terrorist in the South, a martyr in the North. He's executed on December 2nd, 1859. As the country prepares to elect a new president in 1860, many wonder if the nation can survive. I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away, but with blood. 